Hi, my name is Paula. I'm from Page Turner Awards, and I'm delighted to invite Mark Stibb and Yasmin Kane for an interview today. Mark has, um, has some fantastic news, which I'll reveal to you as we go along through this interview. Um, but first of all, I just want to ask Mark, um, what prompted you, Mark, to enter the Page Turner Awards? Oh, that's easy, and it's a very short answer indeed. You sent me a private message on LinkedIn and oh. told me that the awards were happening, and I was just very impressed by the relational, personal touch, because I'd never had that before in any uh, run-up to any kind of awards. So I, I was really struck by that, and I thought if, if it's a relational, personal approach, then I'm, I'm in. And what did you think about the award? What, what is your sort of overall impression so far of Page Two Awards? Uh, I'm deeply impressed. I mean, I think there's great, it's, it's very well organized and, and I feel like as a writer, you're very well cared for. I think there's a lovely sort of caring atmosphere, there's a sense of family of writers, um, which I really, really like. Because I think writing can be a very solitary experience, certainly is for me. Um, and I think with a, a solitary type of calling, uh, you can lose a sense of perspective on how well you're progressing as a writer and so on. But like being a Formula One race driver, um, you can go around Silverstone on your own in your little Formula One car and you can do all the circuits and you can stop in the pits and so on. But actually, the only way you can really gauge uh, how much you've grown is if you enter a race and you subject yourself to the vulnerability of competing with other fellow professionals or aspiring professionals and also submitting yourself to quality judgment um, and evaluation by people who really know what they're talking about. So for me, it was like entering a race. I don't quite like the competitive nature of that analogy, but it was like breaking out of isolation into a place of competition collaboration where I could get a better sense of evaluation on, on where I am. So I like that the idea of breaking out of the isolation because of course as writers we, we are isolated while we're mm. writing and then we have to break out. So that's, that's lovely to hear. Um, let, me, let me go straight to your book. Um, yeah. The book is called The Book in Time. So maybe you can actually give me a little idea um, what your book is about and then um, why you wrote the book. Yeah, well, well the, the book is basically about a book. So um, I had this idea back in about 2014. I was teaching a class of writers up in Manchester at a writing workshop, and I was talking about what, what constitutes a killer idea for a novel. And I started speaking about point of view and how sometimes a great story is simply a familiar subject tackled from an unfamiliar angle and when that happens there's a sort of defamiliarization process that occurs so for example war horse I, i'm sure a lot of people could write a story about a horse um, during world war one but it took michael moore pergo to to think of writing the story from the horse's first person perspective and as i was telling this story about michael moore pergo this idea just dropped into my head and i stopped talking in this class and all these writers were looking at me as if I was having some sort of epileptic fit. But actually what happened, I'd had a kind of epiphany and they said, you've had an idea, haven't you, Mark? And I said, well, yeah, I think I have actually. Um, and I had this idea, what, what, what would happen if you try to write a book about a book from the book's perspective? Born to an elderly woman, Emily Swanson, aged 87 in the year 1805. And you told the story of the book's life and journey over 200, 225 years. Um, a story of a book's longing to be reunited with its mother during all the different fosterings and adoptions that it experiences from the different guardians to whom it's handed. And I just thought, that's, that, that's just a mesmerizing idea. And so they asked me about it. I said, well, that's the idea I've had, but you can't nick it. <laughs> um, uh, they, they're all really nice people. I did touch them. I've kept in touch with them. And they're still asking me about this story and when it's going to come out. And I told them about it. And their their reaction, it was just a resonance in the room. It was just like a yes. 
Um, so the genesis of this story goes back to that Manchester workshop. And um, then it was a question of doing a lot of research because it's historical fiction where I take some imaginary characters as the guardians or adoptive parents and some real characters like the Bronte sisters, which is the chapter that Yasmin likes best. because she's a great fan of the Bronte sisters, as am I. Um, and so it required a lot of research, but then also tonally, I had to kind of decide, well, what kind of tone do I want? And I, I, I kind of, I was stretching towards an adult fairy tale type vibe, magic real, magical realism, I, I think Yasmin calls it, which I think is absolutely right. Um, and so the rest is kind of history. It took me five years to do the actual research and writing for it, but I was doing a lot of other things as well. I wasn't focused solely on that, but it took a lot of work, yeah. Yeah, and historical fiction, you do need to do a lot of research and yeah. you know, really make sure everything is authentic. And it sounds like, you know, a wonderful book, and I can't wait to read it. So um, just everything you've said about it just makes me want to read it. And I think the premise is, is fantastic. It's very unusual. Um, and it's very exciting to know that, you know, an object could become a character. Um, and that object, yeah. you know, just, you know, something that, you know, we as writers all love books. We all love books. And here is a book that is yes. that is a fictional character and it's come to life and it's longing. It's got longings and desires and, and it's on a journey. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, I can't wait to read it. It sounds wonderful. Yeah, no, that was one of the challenges for me, because you, obviously if you if you create a lead character, a protagonist, a hero, whatever you want to call them, you want them to grow. You can't have a static character so the challenge for me was how does a book grow because it's easier to decide how a character a human character might become dynamic and grow through the course of a story but uh, the challenge for me was then to think well how does a book grow and that that's something you'll have to read the story to find out <laughs> <laughs> yes you're keeping me um the other thing i just need to say to you mark is um Congratulations, you've been shortlisted um, in the Page Turner Awards. Um, we obviously don't know who the winners are at this stage, um, but congratulations, and you must be so excited. I know nobody else knows this at the moment. This is all top secret. Um, so how do you feel about that? Well, I'm, I'm obviously overjoyed because, you know, it really boosts your confidence. Right? I don't know a writer who doesn't have dips in confidence and suffers from self-doubt from time to time, um, if not a lot of the time. So to be given that kind of appreciation and positive feedback is, is just hugely affirming. And, uh, you know, writers are sensitive souls and I'm no exception to that. Um, Harper Lee said, you know, the writer has to be the most thick skinned of all people because they're most used to rejection. And I think she knew what she was talking about. Um, so, yes, to, to have the opposite of rejection, to have acceptance, affirmation uh, of one's work, it, it's just, it's, it's extremely exhilarating. So I'm very grateful. Because it's very much a personal thing. It's very much, um, it's almost like your baby and it's, it's sort of bringing that baby out into the world and, and sort of exposing it and showing it to people. And, and it's yeah. frightening, it's exciting, but it's also frightening because you don't know how that baby is going to be received, how what people are going to say. So uh, being shortlisted uh, for an award must be very, very exciting. And um, big news, even even fantastic news for you, is um, that you have received literary representation from Yasmin Payne. So congratulations on that. It's fantastic. How did you feel when Yasmin said to you that, you know, she wanted to represent you and, and see what she could do with your book? What, how did you feel? Well, I was quite shocked because I didn't enter Page Turner, the Page Turner Awards, um, with that kind of um, with that kind of purpose. I, I was really trying to just get my work assessed and try to gauge where I was at. And so when very quickly Yasmin started making these really enthusiastic noises about a book in time, I was first of all shocked and surprised, but secondly. I was really moved by the words that she was using. She used a phrase, she said, I am totally and utterly in love with a book in time. And it was that word love that really impacted me viscerally because 
I think for a long time as a writer, I've been looking for a partner, collaborator, a team player, somebody I could work with, a sister, brother, you know, that I can travel with who, who has the same passion and the same vision, not just for my own writing, but also for the kinds of subjects actually that I want to tackle, particularly subjects like time. And so that sense of, I think there's two things, a sense of synchronicity and a sense of synergy have completely overwhelmed me. So it's the feeling that uh, with Yasmin, these two sorts of disparate experiences of time have fused together in an almost magical way. And, um, and secondly, synergy that already, even in some of the earliest emails to me, I was learning stuff. I was getting greater focus and clarity about what I'm supposed to be doing just from almost giveaway comments from Yasmin. So yeah, you can tell I'm, I'm pretty enthusiastic about what's going on. And Yasmin, tell us, uh, you know, what you were, you were judging the awards, and I'll ask you about that in a minute, what you thought about it. But first of all, um, you were judging the award and you came across a book in time. Tell us, what did you, what did you feel? How did you react? You know, what happened? Tell me. I was minding my own business, as Mark said. <laughs> <laughs> I went into this looking for an author. It never even crossed my mind, I'll be honest. Um, you know, with, as you all know, life is hectic. And with our current workloads, to me, this was another thing I had to carve time out for to really sit down, connect with, you know, the excerpts, a few chapters um, of everyone's writing and give it the best shot, basically connect with it, try and read it um, and ascertain whether it works or not. Um, but within a really short type uh, timescale, um, you've, you're dealing with people's hopes expectations um, and dreams so you have to it's a, it felt like a huge responsibility so I'm whizzing away <laughs> on my little treadmill and then I come across the book in time and I say what <laughs> and that's when I think I'd barely read a few lines when I emailed you Paula saying can you please yes. connect me to this author I need to speak to this person um, and so I then connected with Mark and um, by the time I emailed him I'd read the rest of it um it blew me away instantly absolutely completely boom and as mark put it beautifully there was something shifted in the universe i don't know what happened but um, there was this amazing synergy something just connected mark had no idea i had no idea i mean i loved the concept uh, i didn't know he was into time uh, the bronte it went on and on there's a lot which i hadn't read which came later in the book so i only had two chapters Yes. For me, what really I found profoundly moving in this was um, having read, you know, like all of us, billions of works of fiction over the years and, you know, interspersed with nonfiction. Mark's book is unique in that when we read a book, we connect with the writer's stream of consciousness or their consciousness because those are their ideas they've put down. So your consciousness is connecting with somebody else's consciousness on the written page. What I love is not only are you connecting with Mark's consciousness, but he's kind of moved his ego completely out of the way. And you feel as though, for me, it was real. I mean, that book exists. Um, you're connecting with Emily Swanson's consciousness and her child's consciousness. Even more mind-blowing. I mean, this magical realism, and it's all been done really beautifully and in a romantic sense. But Mark has that beautiful romance running through it it's subliminal it is sublime and it's breathtaking because it's not the romance between love as we know it or, or conventional love sometimes as you see it between a man and a woman but it is a romance because it's a book of love poems and over that you've got the love for that a mother and child has the bond of a parent a mother and a child in this case and the child's longing, he's lost his mother and all he wants is his mother. And he passes from hand to hand to hand because that's how life happens. And the parallel with that would be, well, say there's a human child who's been orphaned and they go from foster home to foster home. It's, it's exactly the same kind of principle, but done with this beautiful, innocent stream of consciousness, which I am, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm completely in love with it. Oh, I mean, I think about the book. I'm not with it. And that's what, that's what I knew. It was special when I kept going back there. <laughs> and 
that's, that's what magic happens. It's beautiful. And Mark, um, what's your takeaway advice for any writers and authors um, listening to us today? What would you say to them about, um, you know, entering an award or entering page to an award or any other awards? What would you, what's your takeaway sort of nugget for them? Well, I think two things that I've learned from Yasmin in this process in the last week or so, um, one of which is already mentioned. Um, but the first thing I would say is that I think those who are judging are very experienced readers, close readers of texts with years of experience. And they know, and Yasmin's given this away already in this interview, they know within seconds, and I mean seconds, whether the writing is something that they want to read on and that they want to pursue, um, they will know within the first paragraph whether the writing is up to scratch. And so the art of the start is what I talk about in writing classes, is actually mastering those first few sentences of every chapter, but particularly your first chapter. Mm -hmm. And it took years to get the first sentence of a book in time right but that's the one I'm most proud of because I know that that's what hooks people um, and the second thing is really about the other side of that which is making sure and I think Paula you've made reference to this in your comments about birth and gestation and delivery which are metaphors actually very close to my heart in book in time that you've got to make sure that the rest of it is ready as well because Yasmin asked for the whole book um, on the basis of reading a few pages and I think I've learned enough from mistakes over the last few years to know that actually it's really important for the whole thing to be ready yes. and, as, yes. and as tight and as sharp as the first sentence is. Mm -hmm. so what you don't want to do is submit um, a really good first chapter to the awards yeah. Um, yeah. and then have a literary agent say, oh, I really like this, and then you submit the rest of the book, and it's nothing like as polished because you focus all your energies on the start. And so I, I just had this sense, you know, coming into lockdown, this was a time to finish a book in time. Lockdown was my, my God-given moment, my Kairos moment. You know, it was the time to finish it, and then I submitted it to my... A reader who I pay for. I pay a professional reader. She's not a beta reader. I call her an alpha reader. Most incredible reader of my work. And uh, she said, yeah, it's, it's ready. She suggested some changes. I made those changes. It's ready. So I knew that the front end and the rest was ready. It was a moment, you know, a moment in time. And it's a book in time. And I think it is a book in time in this sense that I do think there's a shift going on in the world right now in what readers want to read. I know there'll always be an appeal for uh, novels like The Stand by Stephen King about a super flu virus pandemic, you know, which in many ways quite prescient of today, because it kind of encourages people that at least life, even though it's bad right now, it's not as bad as it is for those guys in The Stand. But I also think and I don't know what Yasmin thinks of this, I do think that magical realism has a real future because it, it gives people hope and it offers some sort of hint of healing as well. And people are, I think, so anxious in the world right now and so deeply concerned about where everything's going that I, I think we as writers, we have a duty of care yes. to our readers yes. to, to actually give them an experience that lifts them for a time above the awfulness of what's going on, either in their personal lives or in the collective consciousness of the world. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Mark, yes. sorry, you've put that so beautifully. This is why we get on and why we, I get so excited about talking to Mark, working with him. It's like a dream come true. You know, if you could say, oh, my God, I, you know, these are the kind of writers I want to work with. I, I couldn't even have... I'm just so delighted, I'll be honest. I'm so grateful and so happy because what Mark's just said about escapism, lots of fiction allows you that, chick lit to a certain extent, this whatever mm -hmm. your boat, you know, it's subjective. Art, taste in literary matters, um, as with most things in life. But magical realism has a beautiful edge in that it takes you 
away from not just a surface distraction, it's on a much deeper, more collective consciousness, if you will. There's just something there about, yes. about magical realism. It's almost like you enter another dimension. And it's that beauty of w taking that step, that leap of faith, and going, it's like, you know, in Asgard, the, the golden, the uh, rainbow, it's just like you just, you glide across that rainbow. The minute you take the first step, you're over it, you're into another land. And I love that. That's what magical realism does for you. Now, a book in time will really appeal to readers of um, not so much magical realism, more about time travel and time. Uh, Matt Haig's um, beautiful, beautiful novel, um, how to stop time it's stunning so if you've read that you will love a book in time also the essence and the actual feel the atmosphere of a book in time kind of it's not the same as but it borders on closest book i can come up with in my mind which has the same warmth um and kind of it's like being hugged it's beautiful is um the shadow of the wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, I mean, a stunning, stunning work. Again, a literary work set in a library. Um, and that, that to me, I, when I read a book in time, something went boom. And I just thought this atmosphere, oh, oh. <laughs> now I didn't know he was going to do that. Peter's pet. <laughs> Wonderful, there you go, synchronicity. <laughs> It's wonderful. Um, they're both stunning novels, and I feel a book in time work fits into that category really well. It's beautiful. It's literary fiction. It's a, you know, historical fiction because of the elements it travels through. You know, a couple of hundred years um, of our historical time. Um, it deals with linear time. You know, temporal time. I love. I'm obsessed with time anyway. So this is a gift. I mean, I'm. It's just really exciting. I can't well, wait to get it. Sounds. Started. Sounds like. You know, it's, it's got to be, you know, the book that comes out, it's just going to be a massive, massive... It's going to blow people away. It's going to do really well. Fantastic. Like I'm that. so excited. I'm so Honestly told. It's told so beautifully. And that, you know, marks beautiful imagination. And it's with a lot of feeling and love. It, it's very moving. I, like, I really love what um, Yasmin says about escapism and so on. I think, I don't know if you know that great W.H. Auden quote. I probably should quote a writer once during the course of this interview but and W. H. Auden talked about the two kinds of art he talked about escapist art and parable art he said there'll always be room for escapist art which is just purely taking people outside of themselves to give them a better experience than they have a more intense experience than they have in ordinary life yeah. but he talked about parable art where you unlearn hatred and you learn love again um, and that kind of art is really what I want to explore but I honestly believe that it's almost like W.H. Auden suggested that those are different categories that can never be merged and I wonder if there is a form of writing where you can both do the escapist thing and also offer a parabolic kind of uh, story where where readers are almost unconsciously being helped to unlearn hatred and to relearn love and I think that would be that would be a, a good summation of of what I would like to do with my storytelling. Oh, that's awesome. fairy tales touch on that a little bit, Mark. Yeah, fairy tales are the closest to that kind of truthful writing. And I'm really touched. You mentioned, sorry, Paula, um, W. H. Auden. He's one of my all-time favorite poets. Um, I mean, up there with T.S. Eliot, I'm obsessed with Auden's work. I've read most of his body of work, but I did not know that quote. So thank you very much for sharing that. It I'll send thank it you. To you. I love that. I absolutely love it's that. Beautiful. Well, I'll, I'll send it to you both. I had no idea. Beautiful. And, and, you know, I just want to thank you both for being, you know, taking the time to chat to me today and, um, you know, to just to be here and to share this, this wonderful moment. And it's, it's it's wonderful for for me, you know, for for Page Turner Awards to be so involved um, and and so deeply um, close to this fantastic experience that this lovely wave that you that you riding, Mark, and that you know this journey that you're on with Yasmin, and that you both experiencing this this wonderful time together, and it's lovely that that I'm able to share that with you and be with you, and uh, and you know I can't thank you enough, and I can't congratulate you. Um, but just one last thing um, I want to say before closing the interview, because I do, you know, I do, I'm aware that it's it's, but it's, it's wonderful. I, I think really the takeaway is, um, you know, what 
Yasmin has been saying to me is um, the premise is, you know, the, the premise of a book has really got to be a very good premise. You've got to have a moving story. Well, at least for Yasmin, um, possibly not for all literary agents, but for Yasmin, uh, beautiful prose, um, a moving story. Um, and what Yasmin was saying earlier, um, you know, these have got, and, you know, you've got to hone your writing craft. You've really got to make mm -hmm. sure that over the years, over over time, not necessary years, months, whatever it is, just hone that writing craft. Um, and, and I think, you know, the whole thing about the, the, a book in time is the human, the human nature of this character, the book. Um, it, it's not just a book that we read in, but the character is a book. And um, him, the character, you know, the character being so human and having these desires that we as humans have longings and, and, and love and, you know, this, this encompassing thing called love. And I think that's a, that's a beautiful way to end the interview that we've got a book here, uh, a book in time um, that, that, you know, has longings and love. And everybody, the book comes across, obviously I haven't read it, but everybody who comes, who, you know, comes into contact with the character of the book um, feels this very strong thing that we as humans feel which is love so thank you both for joining me on the interview today and uh well done congratulations and best of luck with the book paula mm. thank you so much i would not have discovered mark has it not been for page turner awards so thank you very 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 much for all the hard work you and ken your husband do running mm. these awards you, I'm sure you work very long hours um, and they're huge. So honestly, I owe you an enormous, enormous thank you for bringing Mark into my life, for which I am eternally grateful. Um, I mean, to read a book that has its own consciousness, you know, a story, the book has consciousness. And to connect with that, it's like all my dreams have come true. It's just, a, it's a proper work of art. It's beautiful. Fantastic. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Paula. Yes, thank you. And I'm just really excited that I've met both of you. And uh, uh, and I'm excited about beginning this adventure, this hero's journey with uh, Yasmin as my mentor and guide <laughs> along the way. She she is Gandalf to my Frodo. So I'm looking forward to teamwork. that. Teamwork. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. It's teamwork. Lovely. And uh, we'll end the interview there. And well done. Congratulations. And we can't wait for the book to come out. So thank you very much. Thank you, Paula. Thank you.